For most normal people, cars aren't really about the driving experience. They're more about making a fashion statement, facilitating your active lifestyle, keeping you fully connected, and letting others know you've made a success of your life. And the new Audi Q2 is designed to do all that and more. It fits into the range between the A3 and the Q3. And it's trying to emulate both a sports car and a rugged SUV. So you've got that jacked up ride height, perfect for traversing speed humps or mounting curbs in town. Big bold grille with that Audi logo there, which is obviously going to be the main reason people are going to buy this car. But then there's a the sports car elements like these air intakes there, which actually <laughs> they're fake and anyway under the bonnet <laughs> this one's only got a 1.6 litre diesel engine with 115 horsepower unusual thing on this car are these creases and it almost looks like someone has folded the metal wrong and they just went yeah, that kind of works let's, let's run with it you've also got quite a high window line and small glass area which continues the sports car theme as does the sloping roof line and these big side blades there which are a bit like that that you get on the audi r8 supercar and we'll see what that does for rearward visibility later on in the video now down here wheels you can get a range of wheel sizes these are 17s but you can get 19s which will probably ruin the ride somewhat at the back a roof spoiler and bizarrely a a rear diffuser um, to obviously smooth airflow while you're whizzing around the supermarket car park and on the whole the rear end of this kike it kind of looks a bit like a mutated Volkswagen Bolo. Hmm. All in all the Q2 is quite an unusual looking thing some people will love it others hmm, not so much. At the end of the day though this is an Audi right so it should have a quality feel and to be fair all the materials in your direct eye line they do feel soft and yielding, as I'll demonstrate now with the CarWow flick test. So, it's fine. It's fine too. But as you move low down, some of the materials do get a bit cheaper. So, ow, that hurts. And, <laughs> that really hurts. So, if you buy an Audi Q2, don't do that. To be fair though, this car is at the lower end of Audi's price range. So, it costs from just over £20,000, which means it's just a couple hundred quid more than an A3 Sportback. And if you match it for engines and spec, it's actually four grand less than a Q3. Now, if you click up there, you can find out the best deal you can get on a new Audi at carwow.co.uk. The Q2 takes its interior from the A3. However, you can brighten things up with a range of colorful personalization options. Now, as we know with Audis, everything comes at a bit of a price. So a standard, you get a seven inch screen, but this is actually the upgraded eight inch screen. It's all singing, all dancing. It's got a high speed graphics processor in it. And it's basically like driving around with a computer in your car. The Q2's operating system is designed to mimic a smartphone and the touchpad has pinch to zoom controls for the maps, though it's actually quite awkward to use. You can get the sat nav with predictive text input, which guesses what you're typing based on your location. The optional virtual cockpit swaps normal instruments for another high definition display. There's an inbuilt SIM card for internet connectivity to access various news services, the social network and Google Maps with glorious street view. And if you don't want to pay for any of these extras, Android Auto and Apple CarPlay let you use your phone's operating system instead. The tech doesn't end there though, there's even more to make the Q2 safe to drive. All cars come as standard with auto emergency braking, which can also spot pedestrians. And you can upgrade it with things like blind spot monitoring. And you can even get a system which can drive the car in low speed stop start traffic and even steer for short periods to keep it in lane for you. And there's auto parking as well. Press a button and it'll bay park the car for you, it'll parallel park it for you, and it'll even drive it out of tight parking spaces. But if you want to actually drive the car yourself, how does it feel? Now, one thing you notice about this car is that the suspension is set up a little bit on the firm side. So you do feel the bumps a little bit more than you do in an Audi A3, but it's never uncomfortable. And if that bothers you, then you can just get the adaptive dampers, which have a comfort mode. The Q2 handles pretty well, but you'd never say it was fun. And while you can get a Quattro all-wheel drive version, the extra grip is not worth the extra cash. If you don't do many miles, get the 1.4 TSI petrol, which is quick and gives decent economy. High mileage should go for this 1.6 litre diesel. I average 5.9 litres per 100 kilometres, or 48 miles per gallon, which wasn't too bad considering my hilly test route. On the whole then, this Q2, it's a nice, easy, relaxing, an inoffensive car to drive. Yeah, okay, so it doesn't do anything particularly exciting, but then it doesn't really need to. After all, that's not why people are gonna buy it now, is it? They're gonna buy it for its image and the fact it's stress-free to drive wherever you are.
the key to has something called progressive steering and effectively what that does is it means that if you just turn the wheel a bit the car hardly responds and that keeps it nice and stable at high speed but if you turn the wheel a lot well it really does turn quite sharply and that makes it dead easy to do low speed turns very tight turns without too much wheel twirling that makes this car dead easy to drive in town as does the raised ride height gives you a good view forward the, the side windows are quite small so all around visibility isn't quite as good as you'd imagine with this kind of car and that thick rear pillar well creates a massive blind spot it's it's very annoying thankfully the rest of the q2 is more practical it feels slightly more roomy inside than the a3 there's enough space for adults in the back seats the boot is not only bigger but more flexible too plus there's sufficient in-car storage so then overall what do i think of this new audi q2 well the looks won't be to everyone's taste and some people may find the suspension a little bit on the firm side but if you can live with that it's actually quite nice to drive and it's surprisingly practical for a small car. Now, if you click up there, you can get more information and find out the best deal you can get on an Audi Q2 at carwow.co.uk. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like it, share it and subscribe to our channel. And if you click over there, you can watch our review of the Audi Q2 with a 360 degree camera, which lets you have a good look around the car's cabin by moving your phone around. Now, did you know that in the past 15 years, Audi has increased its model range from 17 to 44 cars?